Welcome inside the State Champs Sports Network studio for a special State Champs at the State Finals episode for the 2022 MHSAA Bowling Finals. I'm your host, Sydney Cariel. State Champs at the State Finals is brought to you by Lawrence Technological University. LTU offers over two dozen varsity sports, including men's and women's bowling, and you can recruit yourself. If you have the dream of continuing your athletic career, just go to l2athletics.com and click the Recruit Yourself link. Well, let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. We'll start off with Division 4. On the girls' side, Bronson looking for their third title in four years. Made it by 29 pins over Ishpeming Westwood in the semis and Grass Lake handled Allen Park Cabrini by 112 pins to make the finals. And in the Baker games, Bronson would win both, giving them a 60 pin lead heading to the regular game. Sierra Chapo gave Grass Lake a chance as she rolled a match high 186. But consistency is key and Bronson had three bowlers over 150, including a team high 179 from Hadassah Bloom, which gave Bronson an 11-20 to 10-11 win. Oh, this is just from our lows to our highs, and they just finished it all the way to the very end. They, they had moments today that it was a downer, but you know what? Somebody else on the team picked him up, and that's what this is. It's all a team event today, and we all finished strong at the very end. Over to the boys' side, Plymouth Christian, in just their third year, made it to the finals with a 37-pin victory over Vandercook Lake. They faced off with Grass Lake, who beat Cabrini by just five points. Grass Lake would take the Bakers games and a 53-pin lead moving to the regular game. But back comes PCA as Kyle Quick threw a 215 game and Adam Moore had a match high game of 237 to give Plymouth Christian the win by only 32 pins, 1194 to 1162. Emotions are high. Um, we thought we were down and out throughout this throughout this match, um, uh, but uh, as soon as we got past that fifth frame, the kids all of a sudden started taking it to the next level and started having fun with the game again, um, and I think that was the big difference. Well, it doesn't feel real. It's it's incredible. Uh, it's it was a long road to get here. We had a lot of ups and downs, but in the end, we all put in the hard work and we got it done. Heading up to Division 3 and for the boys, Midland Bullet Creek squeezed past Bishop Foley by 70 pins to make the finals. They faced off with Gladwin who handled Sterling by 126. Bullet Creek took the advantage after the Baker games with a 72 pin lead, but Gladwin came on strong in the regular game with three bowlers with a 200 or higher, including Brady Weston with 200. Braden Phillips with a 211, and Junior Phillips with a high game of 225, pushing Bullet Creek over the top as they win it 1287 to 1110. I'll tell you, this is our second state title in uh, for bowling in school history, our third state title for any of our sports in school in our school. Uh, we won the 2019 state championship right here, uh, or with uh, Division Three. It, uh, I was crying. I don't cry much with this stuff, and, and for these guys to do this is just exhilarating. It's been an awesome, awesome season, awesome day. Uh, they, they dug in they, a couple times. They kind of get down a little bit, but they pumped them back up, got them going again, and, and they, just, they just persevered. Uh, this group of boys right here, I'll tell you what, they are probably the most fluid group of kids I've worked with yet, or that we've worked with. Uh, they're all really good friends, they all hang out, they come bowling together, they do all kinds of stuff together. So for them to have to mesh and have that good team team camaraderie has been awesome. And now to do this, it just solidifies that. This is just awesome. For the girls, we saw Shepard making the finals for the first time in school history after they beat Flint Powers in the semis by 23. They took on Sheboygan, making the finals after taking out Hudsonville Unity Christian by 106. Shepard, who had never competed in the MHSAA tournament before, was ahead after the Bakers game by 60. Sheboygan would win the regular game and were led by a game-high 210 from Jenna Knopfel, but it wouldn't be enough as Kendra Walsh from Shepard and her 187 would keep the Blue Jays in front to win their first state title, 1041 to 987. I, 
I knew they could do it. I knew that they should have been here last year. I, not that they would have been state champs last year, but they should have been here last year and they faltered. And coming into this one, I thought for sure we had a shot um, at regionals. We squeaked it into regionals. I thought we were going to falter there. We didn't. Um, we made it into the third place and got here. And today I just told them, I said, hey, have fun, just bowl. And it is what it is. And they bowled the best they've ever bowled all season today. So what does I, that mean as a I, coach? To see them do their I love best on the biggest stage. Well, it brought me to tears, actually, is what it did. But the, the, the biggest thing was I didn't have to coach today. They just bowled. I didn't, they didn't ask me much. I didn't have to tell them to do much. They just did what they were supposed to do. So I, I enjoyed today. This is the fun part of bowling when I don't have to really do anything. So. In Division Two from the Super Bowl in Canton, we had the girls from Flint Kearsley found themselves facing off with a familiar team, the one that knocked them out of the semifinals two years ago in Mason. Mason held a 25-pin lead after the Bakers game, but Kearsley wanted that championship back and rallied behind Lydia Boggs, rolling a match-high 191 to lead Kearsley to a narrow 35-pin win, 11.78 to 11.43. Push that baby! Come on! Everybody, let up. Um, so this season was a different kind of one. Um, I'm a new coach and I have seven girls who are basically new players. Um, they had a lot of JV experience, but not a lot of RC experience. So this is almost a brand new team. Um, they've grown so much since we've started. Um, and I'm so incredibly proud of all of them and I couldn't have done it without each and every one of them. But it was, it was definitely a tough road and a lot of hard work was put in, but overall they did it. Um, it was insane. It was, well, not insane, but it was just a lot to take in. It was crazy for me to even like dream of being here. I've bowled, been bowling for Grizzly since I was in sixth grade, and I remember just sitting and watching the girls bowl and bowl, and I was like, oh my gosh, they're so amazing. And they would win titles and win titles, and it was just like there's such much, there was so much to live up to. And then we got here, and everybody, because we got a whole fresh new team, and everybody was kind of. Not to say everybody thought we were going to fail and everybody was saying we were going to fail, but that's what the aura around our team was. And just to come here and prove everybody else wrong was just amazing. And to do it together as a team was awesome. On the boys' side, Tecumseh would win wire to wire over New Boston Huron by 47 in the semifinals and set up a match with Grand Rapids Northview, who also won it wire to wire over Jackson Northwest by 24. In the finals, Tecumseh will get an eight-point edge, 366 to 358. Tecumseh will get a great game from Andrew Rowe with a 213, but two bowlers over 200 for Northview, as David Frey had a high score of 217, Kyle Pranger just behind him with a 212, and Caden Pranger with a 201, which gave Northview a 1347 to 1323 win to become Division II Boys State Champions. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, the number of coaches that have already reached out from the west side, uh, local local coaches, uh, it's absolutely amazing. We we are we're a pretty close knit group over there. Uh, we know that usually when we come over here for state stuff, the, the west side schools usually don't perform as well. Uh, but this was one time that that didn't happen, uh, and we came in with a little bit of a, a chip on our shoulder. Uh, we we returned our whole team from last year. We made match play last year as well. Returned our whole team, and the 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 coaches association. Uh, that does rankings uh, didn't even acknowledge us. Uh, we were unranked all year, um, and we came in and made sure that we showed them why we should have been. Grand Rapids bowling community is really close, really tight knit, and like Harold alluded to, the the teams on the west side don't get the recognition that the teams on the east side get. They don't get the coverage. They don't get the the newspaper clippings. They just it's always a focus on the east, and we just told these kids we're going to come here and show them who we are on the west side. And that's what we did today. And I'm proud of each and every one of these these kids, especially my senior Dawson here who goes out with a state state title after four years in the program. And it's just a special day for Northview Bowling. Uh, it was weird. It, it was really nerve-wracking at just at the start and is the whole time through just keeping those nerves in like calm and in check was a struggle, but we're able to get through it with each other, talking to each other, and just celebrating every shot. In Division One for the boys, 
Livonia Franklin coming off an 105 pin win over Davison was taking on Eisenhower, who handled Midland with a 274 pin victory. After the two Baker games, Franklin was ahead by just 29, 390 to 361. Ike tried to close the gap in Jacob Matheson's 211 team high, but it wasn't enough as Franklin behind strong showing from Ian Kane rolling a 251 and Ian Wright 267. Franklin would win the Division I Boys Championship 1451 to 1214 in just their fourth year of having a program. Yeah, well, we knew uh, we were a season team. Um, we had uh, five seniors coming back, and uh, we got pretty close two years ago. Um, last year, we stumbled at the end of regionals and didn't make the cut, and it's been eating at us uh, for oh, a calendar year. And this was the goal, to get here. And we were getting ready to bowl that last singles game. And I said, guys, we're here. Have fun with it. And, th and they went off. It was awesome. It means a lot to us. You know, we grinded all season, worked really hard the last four years, and for our five seniors that are going this year, you know, big accomplishment for us. Yeah, we made match play our sophomore year and had a really unfortunate end to our season last year, winning states by three. Uh, we all knew coming into the season that we were going to be t uh, top favorites, and we just put our heads down, got to work, and really grinded out today and worked as a team to get this off. Over to the girls now, Davison made it to the finals after beating Farmington by 315 pins. They were taking on Macomb, Dakota, as they had to top division foes Lance Cruz North and did so by just 109 points. A tight game after the Bakers, Dakota, held just an 11-pin lead, 362 to 351. Davison was led in the regular game by Carly Wells with 165 and Brooklyn Wokter with 162. But Dakota would prevail as Jillian Lipinski threw at 185 and Haley Patterson rolled a match high of 223 to give Dakota a 102 lead as they win it 12-22 to 11-20. This team has worked incredibly hard. That's uh, the one thing I can say is, is that I've got some of the most dedicated bowlers in the state on this team, obviously, and they uh, it, 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 things things change for us. We we lost two really really great bowlers, one of the best bowlers in the state, and and, and and a really awesome bowler as well too. And I think that this team understood that its identity was was not striking anymore. We used to depend on striking from 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 those two girls, and 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 also others, but we. The girls really took it a task this year to make sure that spares was their number one priority, which always should be that way. But but it was different this year. I, it was it was more than just just us coaches trying to tell them that it was it was them actually saying we got to do this. You know we actually actually have to do this. And I mean, a lot of times at practice, I'm not even telling them to work on spares or, or, or whatnot. They're just doing it on their own, and I, that, that's a tribute to them and and what and, and and their motivation, their drive, and their understanding of what it takes to win and w being willing to do the work to. to to do so, so. I'm at a loss for words right now as a senior and everything. It's It was all ups and downs with emotions all day. Yes, I'm sad to leave, but at the same time, this is like the first time in four years that I've been in this arena. I've qualified for states for teams or individuals every year, but we've never come this far before and it's just exciting for us. Yeah, it hasn't hit me yet. I, um, I'm just sad that this is my last year, and well, but I'm also excited because I'm ready to see what this team will do next year, and I mean, I'm just happy to go out with a bang, I guess. We also want to give a huge congratulations to all of the individual winners from the weekend as well. You can see them all on your screen right now. Well, with another season of bowling in the books, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in to State Champs at the State Finals. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search State Champs Michigan or State Champs W for all of our women's content. One more big congratulations to all of the new state champions, and we will see you next time on State Champs at the State Finals. 
State Champs at the State Finals is presented by Lawrence Technological University. LTU offers over two dozen varsity sports for men and women, along with several dozen world-class undergraduate programs. Athletic and academic scholarships are available in all sports. Visit ltuathletics.com and recruit yourself. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. The Detroit Medical Center Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine Pros. Do you have a sports injury or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Go where the pros go. Visit dmc.org slash game changers. Goodman Acker Law Firm. Our clients come to us during one of the most difficult periods of their life. After an accident or injury, call Goodman Acker today at 1-800-TRUSTED. EA Graphics. Get your official MHSAA championship merchandise at shopmhsaa.com.